Welcome everybody to Hong Kong Lacrosse Association's virtual lacrosse conference for 2021. This evening we've got a, a very special guest, uh, a friend of mine named Trevor Wagar. Uh, he's got an extensive lacrosse background, which includes growing up playing box lacrosse in Canada, in the Guelph, Ontario area. He played junior B there. He also played senior A in Southern Ontario for Kitchener, Waterloo and uh, Barry Lakeshores. Uh, he was drafted uh, by San Jose into the NLL. He also won a national junior college championship at Herkimer and uh, went on to play division one at Vermont where he holds a record for the most goals in one game. I believe that record is eight, which still stands today. Uh, he's currently a high school phys ed teacher in Milton, Vermont, where he also coaches their high school team. And because of his extensive background in both box and field lacrosse, tonight Trevor is going to talk to us about using the two-man game in field lacrosse and how effective those box concepts can work in the field game. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Trevor, welcome. Uh, hi there, I'm Trevor Wagar, and uh, today we're going to be talking a lot about uh, picking, um, picks and rolls, and uh, the essentials and the elements that go into good picks and rolls. Um, we're going to talk about them in the, in the field lacrosse sense, but also apply them to some uh, box lacrosse settings as well. Not only are we going to go over the essentials and the components, um, um, but also talk about kind of which specific picks and name them that we're going to use. And then we're going to apply them to some different field lacrosse sets and then also talk about some different box lacrosse um sets and how they're used in box lacrosse uh so just a couple things right off the top the uh, the essential components for picking or setting a good pick um getting to the heart uh or behind the defender you are picking is one of those first essential components and what i mean by that on the field is if we can look at this in a box lacrosse or a field lacrosse sense all right this is basically the heart or right in the middle uh, of the offensive set or right above the goal. And anytime anyone picks from anywhere, they should be either heading into this zone, into this heart, and then coming out or starting from the inside and working their way out. In that, we're getting behind the defenders. Um, the second, the second point is, uh, or essential component is communicating with the ball carrier. So this can be verbal or nonverbal. Um, this can be body language. This can be um, just approaching on one side of the defender or the other, right? You're communicating which side you want that player to go with the ball when you're setting the pick. It also could be hand signals as you're coming up. You could be having your hand out to the right. Uh, signifying to that ball carrier that you're going to set that pick on the right uh, uh, shoulder of the defender and you want that player to essentially go left. All right. Um, it, the other one could be verbal. All right. But those are a little more uh, easy to pick up from a defensive standpoint. Um, the third thing is reading the defense. So um, what player uh, is covering the ball? All right. Is it a short stick or a long stick? All right. Is it a big player or a small player, a fast player or a slow player? Um, which stick are they, are they holding their hand? Um, are they right-handed or left-handed? All right. Um, so all those things have to come into play. Uh, also too, after you get into the flow of the game, you can see how some defenders will play on picks. Will they switch? Will they stay? All right. So we're reading them as the game moves forward. All right. Um, the fourth out of five here is always see the ball. So if I am up here, all right, and let's just say we're in a one four one set and I'm going to cut to the heart and I'm going to go down here and set a pick for this midfielder who is coming around the top or the bottom of that, whichever way, if they come around the top and I roll, let's say I'm doing a pick and roll, um, I have my feet planted here. As I'm rolling, I need to make sure my eyes are facing this way and I'm rolling this way but my body is not turning my back to the ball uh, right here in that ball carrier, okay? Um, and then always be ready to catch and, and react and shoot, all right? Um, that is part and parcel with the keeping the eyes on the ball, 
because we first keep our eyes on the ball and then we have our stick in position and we're ready to catch, we're ready to shoot, we're make, ready to make a play instead of setting a pick with our hands and our stick way down on our hips and we can't catch from our hips, right? We have to have our stick and uh, our, our eyes ready um, to catch and react. Um, most of that too comes from, um, you know, being able to react to that defense uh, as well and where they're going and where they're moving um, from there on. So, uh, so a quick question, um, where does that term the heart come from? I know, uh, I, I mean, I've heard it before, obviously, uh, but where does it come from and what does it mean? So, you know, it wasn't until later in my playing and um, coaching career that I actually heard this term, but a guy named Johnny Meridian brought that to my attention well, through running some um, box lacrosse clinics and uh, things like that with some youth through the uh, IS, uh, USILA and, and came to Vermont to put on some uh, Voyager um, sessions. But basically what that means is um, just like uh, the heart, all right, there's blood flowing in and out of it. There should be players flowing in and out of this space on the field. And also specifically with box lacrosse, it takes a lot of heart to get to the middle because playing defense against defenders that won't let you get there, it takes a lot of grit and courage and heart and determination to really get there first um, and then get out to set a pick. And that is one of the most like, you know, uh, important parts of box lacrosse picking is just fighting to get to the heart first. In field lacrosse, you can run in there unimpeded, but with box lacrosse, you literally have to fight to get in there. Yeah, it's funny that you bring up Johnny's name. I I was thinking earlier where I had heard it first. And now that you say it, I'm sure I heard it from Johnny uh, first as well. Okay, great. That's th Thanks. Uh, go ahead. Okay, so um, basically I'm just going to go over what some of these picks um, look like and what they're kind of named or called. And s there are a lot of names uh, for these. You can hear terms like razor picks and... Um, uh, things like that um, but just kind of for the basic um, um, level we're just gonna kind of name them as we as we get going okay so the first kind of pick is uh, I just call it like the basic pick all right uh, anything that you'd see in a game of basketball anything that you'd see in box lacrosse here uh, in field lacrosse but just as an example I'll do two different variations here if we have a player here and a player here in a one for one set let's just say um, this player has already started in the heart, okay? This player is our ball carrier, all right? These players should just be a little bit higher up. Basically, this player is coming out and the defender is here to set a pick on one side or the other, to the left or th to the right. So they're setting their feet uh, here to the right of the defender or they're setting their feet here to the left of the defender as he is looking at this player, and then this player is gonna come off whatever side that player has set that pick, All right? So that's that basic pick. Uh, um, if that works, you know, um, then that's something that you just wanna continue to do over and over and over again to defenders, all right? It would be the same kind of deal if we had our players starting here, one way or another, whatever player is cutting to the heart first, all right? This player is getting himself in position, and we've got that basic pick coming up or down for those players to go above and below. Um, if we started here and we pass the ball down to this player, this player is coming up into a position and then coming out again, left or right. And this player has to read where they're going around top or bottom. Okay. So we'll switch them back there. So that's just our, our basic pick. And that could happen on the field uh, behind the goal, above the goal to the other side really anywhere that can take place. Okay, the next variation, if you will, or the next pick that uh, usually comes from this is if we have our player starting inside again and our player here, we're just calling this the pick and roll, okay? Really anybody who sets a good pick should be rolling every time. Uh, but again, that's about reading the defense. So let's say again, we have our defender here and we have this M3 player approaching the ball carrier. And let's say he's going to set a pick on the top side of this defender. 
or on that uh, defender's right foot or right side, all right? This player is carrying left-handed around the pick, all right? And if this pick works, typically this defender and the defender following M3 get a little confused on who's going to go with that person or not. Sometimes two players will jump to the ball. Uh, sometimes we can lose a defender in the middle here. But essentially, after this player goes around this pick, this player just rolls off and then is heading toward the goal. All right. We're not, we don't want to get in this player's way per se, because they could come right around the pick and go right to the goal themselves if there's no help defense. All right. However, if this player sets this pick, all right, and this player is rolling around here, all right, we might be leaving one or two defenders here or this one defender shot through. And therefore this player is open and we can have a small pass here and then potentially going to the goal or shooting, right? So that's basically what our pick and roll could look like. And obviously it could look different if we went underneath, right? Because this player's trajectory to the goal would be here and this rolling is happening there, right? Same thing could happen behind, right? Uh, we have a player coming across here, all right? And we're setting a pick there and then we're rolling to the back side. All right, uh, all these variations can happen anywhere, but essentially uh, we're keeping, we're setting our pick, we're keeping our eyes on the ball and we're rolling to open space. So, so it looks to me like any pick and roll, you're trying to create a two on one situation by at least leaving one of the defenders behind the ball carrier and the, and the, the pick setter. Yeah. Um, and that two on one or the, the reduction, all right, um, the reduction of players on defense is really what the offense is looking for no matter what. So whether we're just dodging and we're drawing a second defender to us, now we're creating, someone's open somewhere, right? So we have two against one, all right? Or one offense player against two. So in that situation here too, now where we're picking, all right, we might have that defender who is, following this player right here over, all right? If this pick is set well enough up high, all right? This defender might still sneak around that pick, all right? But this player might have an edge and this defender might jump there, all right? So again, then we have that two on one, two defenders on this one ball carrier. And then that's where our roll comes in, all right? All right, any dashed line is the pass. So yeah, we are creating that two on one. So you're trying to find an odd man situation somewhere. Okay. Yeah. And a, another little thing that I will say is that usually with a pick and roll and most times we've got a very, sometimes it's a very narrow window to pass. And if we don't pass, then that time has passed and it's gone because the defenders do well recovering. So we might have that little window in there where we can pass it. But otherwise, if we don't have our stick ready to pass as the ball carrier, uh, and if you're not ready to catch as the uh, picker or the receiver of the ball, then you know we're not gonna get that two-on-one pass happening there. But however, we still could have a good drive around the top in this situation that could create a, a scoring opportunity, so. Okay, so as a coach, then how do you train that, that read and react? Well, we start typically, I start typically just setting up in a, a, you know, a drill where we, where we have four corners. Let's forget this player is here. And we're just running through what it looks like to get into the heart and set a pick. So we have guys who pass down and then pick down. So we pass down, we have this player getting ready and elevating a little bit because setting a pick down here, there's no option for that player other than to go above. So if we get kind of 50, 50, then we have this pick coming out. So we go through it intentionally. And so we tell every player, all right, at the start, you're going to come around the top. Now our next progression is you're going underneath. Now the next progression is you're going around the top. Okay. But this player is rolling and we are intentionally passing and there's no defense here. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we progress to a couple more, more difficult progressions. We're doing different picks from different angles and different variations and different locations on the field. Then we start adding one defender. Hmm. 
and we have a two-on-one created for ourselves already on the offensive side. And so we tell those defenders, all right, you get to pick what you do. You can either lock off this guy, isolate him. You can cover the ball. You can try and hang in the middle and play. And just we let that defender have a lot of freedom, and we kind of allow those two players to, to gang up on that, on that defender. But what they're trying to do is use the pick progression or the, like, just knowledge of, like, who's open, where do I go to, to find open space and create open spaces. And then, obviously, we add twos. Right. And then we add three V threes and then we four V fours and we just build, build, build from there. So progression and, and lots of reps. Yeah. And that could take weeks and months. Yes. Okay. So we got pick, we've got pick and roll. Now the third variation here, something we call, I call the slip pick. All right. And I think this is where the razor pick comes in because it is um, a very quick kind of, uh, kind of look, all right? But uh, essentially, we've got our ball carrier here, all right? And we've got our defender uh, on them. They're in good position. I've got my picker in the heart. I've got my ball carrier kind of at 50-50 above the goal. He's not on the goal line. He's not way up here. Could be up here if it's a different set. Um, but at least in a one four one set, we're, we're right here. We have this picker coming out. All right, with the defender trailing him. Okay. And if we've noticed earlier on in the game that this defender who is covering the picker tends to jump. All right. So we have this potential pick that we set up top where both defenders ended up jumping. Right. And we've created that two or two on one and they're going heavy onto the ball. We're essentially faking a pick here, right? So as this player is going to the ball carrier, there will be an approach as if they are going to set their feet, but then quickly, all right, a little run through and creating open space down here, down low. So now those, both those defenders have jumped and then we have our pass similar to the pick and roll, but it is um, so quick, we're, we're coming at the player and then we're just kind of slipping without even setting our feet because we have to set our feet and feel the cross for it to be a legal pick. But if no one touches you, if you don't touch a defender, the defenders don't touch you, you can't get called for an illegal pick, all right? So if your feet are continuing to move and you're look, oh, I'm gonna set that and then I slip through, that creates our opening and our sliver. Obviously the ball carrier has gotta be aware to pass down very quickly before he gets two sticks in his hands all right so that so that that comes from one of your essentials of of being able to read the defense yeah and this might be third quarter right first quarter second quarter we're setting our basic picks we're setting our picks and rolls we're always ready to roll because if we could go to set a basic pick and then, oh, I got to roll because the defenders are out to lunch and then get an opportunity. But first and second quarter, we're getting a read on what the defense is doing. And if we notice they're really jumping, we notice they're really doing this and we notice they're, they're not savvy with that off ball picker defenseman. Now we start slipping. Now we start slipping a lot. And again, it could be up top. It could be up here. This player has the ball and we're, coming in this way and these two guys jump right there and he's just slipped over to this side and we bang it over here and now we've got a scoring opportunity there and that same thing could happen behind the goal as well if we're in two 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 set you know so right here um the last one um is basically a, a pick and a repick and this is the hardest one to really teach. It's the hardest one to learn. And honestly, it's the hardest one um, that comes organically. Um, a lot of players aren't thinking uh, two plays ahead, two passes ahead, two moves ahead, like chess, where when we get to these higher levels and we are really good with our stick skills that we're not having to think about cradling, we're not having to think about having our stick ready, we're able to have our eyes on the pickers we're able to have our eyes on the ball 
this is more of a high level skill when we're not having to think about that. But the pick and repick really does work, I would arguably say, best in this one for one setting. Or if we have our players kind of playing a two man box type style on the side, it can work behind and above. All right. But typically, um, we see this working here just with the way that we can attack the goal from, you know, that 45 or that 45. So essentially, we've got our same setup out of this, out of this setup. We've got our defense in here. And the reason why we do this pick and repick is if we have defensemen that are very aggressive, very fast, and very good on the ball, and they're getting around the top of our pick, Let's say we're trying to set this on the defenseman's right shoulder, okay? And that defenseman is getting around that pick and able to stay with the ball carrier the whole time. Sometimes that happens. We have good defensemen, all right, that are very agile and athletic, all right? If this happens, okay, what we can do is then this picker needs to essentially follow the ball carrier and the defenseman who might got might have gotten all the way to here, all right? And then we just follow that defender and we're gonna set it on the opposite shoulder that we were trying to set before. This player has to have the knowledge and awareness to be able to stop and plant and then roll back, okay? Typically opening up here might be difficult because we're opening up our sticks to the defenders. Right, but if we stop and plant and roll back, and then we come around this new pick set, we might now lose this defender because not a lot of defenders are expecting the picker that they just ran around to then follow them and pick on their backside again. And now we're also creating an opportunity where that defender is very focused on the ball because they just had to fight around to, care, to, to stay with the ball and they can't see what's coming behind them. So now we have the element of surprise where we're sneaking up behind them. And then from this repick, we have our variations of the first three where we can just kind of stand still and be basic. We can roll, all right? Or we can even slip. Um, and that would be kind of the most like high upper echelon uh, version of that. With the second, um, with that second defenseman, who is following this original picker, right? Sometimes, right, they will be, if they're in good defensive position, they're essentially here or here, right? And they might pick up this new player who's gone off the repick, but therein lies our roll, okay? Or our slip inside there. Um, and there's our opportunity or our window to pass here or with a little more carry, here in that set. Yeah. Um, and I think um, one of the things that I've, that I've been, uh, been working with some players in the recent past is that you've got to really work on your stick skills and your abilities to move that ball quickly into space, as opposed to trying to make a perfect pass to the picker. I think this is something that, that is lost on a lot of field players when they first start playing in this two man game. Can you, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah. So a lot of field across players have, and it's built and it's been drilled into them and that, and that is okay that every pass has to be really hard, right? Because typically in field across passes are a little bit longer than they are in box lacrosse and they are inside. So yeah, we do have to pass that ball a lot harder. Okay, but once we get in here, and especially once we get in here, if we've got opportunities to take advantage uh, and we set good picks, most of the time, you know, our third sliding defenseman, because this is our, our first slide, or more, we're playing defense in one, and our second slide is there, the third slide over is usually late and it's hard to come by. And when we, we can, so then we can take advantage of passing the ball in and we can pass it a little softer. We can put it in the space. And what I think you mean is if we have a pick set on a defender here on this top side, and this defender is coming around them. Okay. This pass before this M2 rolls should be 
out to the front so that that player can reach the ball and step into the ball, all right? Because we're putting it in that space. We're floating it into this space potentially where that player is going to step into the ball and that creates a good shooting opportunity because if you're a left-handed player and your stick is in front of you and you're catching the ball here, you all you have to do is bring your hands back and now I'm ready to shoot right now. That's it, okay? Instead of um, I'm catching it like back here and I can't kind of see the goal, all right? I'm catching it behind me or I'm catching it like low and then I have to bring my stick up, all right? Um, or I catch it and then I run low with my stick and then try and shoot. By that time, our third defender has come over. Our goalie's aware of the situation, right? The other thing too, is if anyone ever catches inside this area, typically it's better to shoot the ball as quick as possible because of the element of surprise. Thank We're you. not giving that goalie that one, two step set ability. It's in and out of our stick before they are able to even move to that space. And that space might just be one step, but that still is very important. Agreed. Okay. I talked a lot. A lot of this was through the one for one set. So I'll elaborate a little bit more on how uh, this would work in our one for one set, but then I'll start to talk about um, some of the other sets um, that we can do. Uh, but before that, just a little, a little talk about off ball picks. All right. So let's keep this, let's keep this one for one set um, in play just because we've been rolling with it. And we're going to talk about the off ball guys. All right. In a one for one set, if we continue to pick over on this side and we have our ball carrier here, all right. These two players are typically, you know, on islands. They're not really necessarily going to go pick for anyone. All right. They should be kind of showing to the ball and this uh, player can be stepping down uh, that if there is a lot of uh, traffic here, that can be a pass to a shot or a dodge, or we have a relief valve down here. Okay. So both of those players probably won't be picking, but on the other side, we have potential for off ball picks. All right. So in an off ball pick situation, right, this player who's basically closer to the ball should be the one who's picking. The player who's farthest away from the ball should be the one who's coming off a pick, all right? And we can apply essentially all the same principles from on ball picks to off ball picks, but the difference is the spacing with the defenders because you're not going to have one player right on somebody off ball because they can't be. And two, you have defenders who are in place for sliding purposes. Um, so it's harder to kind of set an off ball pick on a player uh, because they're moving so much and they're positioning themselves on defense, right? But let's just say all this normal picking has happened. We've got a basic pick happening top side over here, right? This player basically needs to position themselves on the hopefully the closest person to, um, you know, or the, sorry, the second closest person to the ball. If our, this is our other defender, okay? We have another defender here, we have another defender here, we have another defender here, another defender here. This player is really looking to kind of pick on this player because typically that guy right in the middle is going to be like a hot slide, all right? So if this pick, let's say it works, or even if it doesn't, it's enough to make this defender nervous so that they start, kind of cheating to potentially this spot. So it's hard to set a pick on this guy when this guy has to come all the way over. So instead, we try and find the back side or left or right to this player over here. We have this player coming above or below. And then reading the situation, reading the defense and knowing your personnel here, if this picker picking on the back side of that lone defender covering this backside guy, right? If this player goes above, this player needs to read this and shoot down and roll to the net below. Opposite situation happens if this player goes below, right? This player's got to roll up into this space 
to create some spacing because if this player just stays here or follows where that other player goes, we've got two players here with one defender and able to cover them and this defender in a stick lane right here where this pass is not gonna go through to those two players. Um, so that's kind of how like the off ball pick works there. And I'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about the two, two, two set. So the off, off ball pick after the pick and roll, th those players are trying to find soft spots in the defense, right? Yeah. <laughs> those, those passing lanes that still give you a shooting lane. Yeah. And if we look at just like our setup, you know, you can tell where the soft spots are depending on your setup. If we're in one four one, there should be big soft spots mm. here, right? Because most of the defenders are mimicking where we are, all right? If you're in a two 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 set, then we should have a lot of soft spots around here, right, in this area, because we usually have two defenders out here, two defenders in the middle, and then two defenders behind. We've got a lot of soft spots on the wings here, right? If you're in a motion offense, your soft spots are more isolated to like a one three two. Your kind of soft spots are more isolated into those spots and sometimes down a little bit lower. And then finally, if you're in like an open set, I mean, ultimately your soft spot is right in the middle. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the one four one set. We've done a lot of our examples through the one four one set with an on ball wing dodge and an off ball pick, right? But now we're gonna talk about what it looks like from dodging from above and then quickly from behind. So our, traditional mumbo as they call it look right is a one four one set with a dodge from above and a pick two off ball picks happening that seal all right it's a term we haven't used yet but seal but essentially pick on um, one of the outside defenders right so typically our defenders are here right probably here in some way shape or form right and then about here, they probably wouldn't be too far outside the wing line because uh, they, they're not on the ball, right? Uh, and essentially, this player has the freedom to go one side or the other, okay? Ideally, they're picking one side and going with speed, and hopefully it's their, their strong hand so that they can shoot or pass to the best location uh, and the best option they have, right? If this player goes and then rolls back, this timing can kind of be off a little bit and it needs to be watched by the off ball players. All right. So let's just say this player goes to their right hand. What we have here is basically both of the outside players coming to set, um, you know, picks either flat kind of picks. All right. Or um, a, like a top side pick. All right. On these defenders. And then this would actually be a little closer to the goal. We have these players from the inside out coming around. Okay. And actually where the picks would really be set is probably more here, right? And here a little bit more realistic and closer to the goal so that we'd be catching. We're certainly catching inside the side restraining lines um, from one of these players. So this uh, MIDI has the option to, continue dodging and go to the goal, can pass to the first, this is kind of usually your first option, the one right in front of your face. The pretty riskier uh, option, but is also available is uh, that cross body uh, pass, which can be easy for a righty um, who is skilled enough to pass down there. Uh, and so we've got basically, you know, those options happening. With these players that picked now, right? It is a great thing if they, roll down to the goal there to also create soft spots in the defense because if they just stay still they're covered by one or two players and then we're not creating a ton of options especially uh, if there's a pass and that player can't shoot so let's just say this player does the hard option and passes over to this player this defender might shoot up and slide over there but because this player came from this pick and slid down low, this can be a one more pass to a turn and shoot. 
So we're not scoring immediately from the Dodger from the first pass, but we're scoring from the second pass. And defenses are typically not good on the first slide, not bad on the second. The third is really difficult for them. And that's where we score a lot of goals when we move the ball, bang, 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 and it's in the net. I'll take a look at just quickly the dodge from behind, right? And we'll talk about something we just talked about off camera there for a second. But, you know, essentially we're looking at the same kind of alignment. The only thing is if the ball's behind, all of these players really need to elevate a little higher to create space and room. Okay. This guy's going to kind of float here as a safety relief valve and, um, and a last option for a, a step down shot. Right. But as the midi was dodging, these players were a little lower, They're probably five yards off the goal line. Now that the ball's behind, right. And we're covered by uh, defenders here. These players need to get higher up. We're probably looking at about 10, maybe 15 yards uh, above the goal line. Okay. To create space. Right. And that first creation of space is specifically referencing the defenseman because one of these two players, if they're sliding from the crease, uh, are going to be sliding to the ball. Cause so if this player drives this player to the right and he is beat. All right. Um, one of these players has to go to him to slide. So that is a longer slide and a more difficult slide. If this is a really fast attackman, they could sneak around to the corner and score. Right. But in this set, it's kind of like that same option where we're, we're setting our picks. Um, we're setting our picks from the inside out, right? And these players can come around the top and kind of cut through, right? But this guy has to slide down, right? And be an option for a cross crease pass, right? And now if this player slides down, okay, here, and this player, let's just say they're still playing good defense. There's a two on one right there because this defender is down here and this defender has to split these two guys. And one of them could be floating. Uh, one of them could be cutting hard to the net, right? If that defender has to go, well, then we've got a pass here. And that's a, that's a relatively good shot. It's not the best shot, but it's a relatively good shot. Um, and then the other option too, that could come from this, right? Is if these players, all right, set their picks, okay? And we have this player set to the outside and he like goes underneath, all right? This player can step down into this spot, all right? Because this defender might have to go and leave this player, okay? This defender might have to go to leave to cover this player. And we could have, all right, if this player is cutting to net, we could have a pass right here for a potential shot or a dodge to open space because this defender is down here now, all right? And this is a big soft spot to dodge to, right? Very um, read and react kind of situation, but. Uh, typically the above one for one mumbo dodge will get us some more looks because players are above the goal and ready to shoot. It's a little more complex when we work from underneath. So, yeah, I know uh, a lot of teams don't like to, to work with that uh, underneath because they're afraid if they miss that pass up to that top midi, that it's a loose ball going the, the other direction. Uh, but I think that's your last option anyways, because you've got those, those two attack men or the two minis working down low that are the, that are the better options and probably going to open up more often. Yep. This set can be run in many, many different ways. Um, but what I'll talk about is essentially um, the way Virginia runs it. And there's some great videos online that we can reference to that. Uh, and what they do is they create partnerships or pairs or groups, if you will, and they have a midfielder with an attackman, right? And so how they do that is they have their um, best attackman with their third midfielder. This is M3 
They have M1 up here with A2, and then M2 and A3 are on the crease, okay? And so they do a lot of the dodging from behind, right? And in this set, uh, I love the dodging from behind here, but I love it just as much uh, above, okay? So what they try to really do and what a lot of teams really try to do is isolate a matchup behind the goal, okay? So if we look at this as the defense breaks down, right, the third midfielder, okay, is, is not the best dodger slash player as the M1 and the M2, typically, all right? If we have a really good midfield crew, it might not matter. But nevertheless, typically a short stick defender, one of the two, or the worst defender on the field would cover M3. And therefore, if we have our best attackman against the best defender, right, and we have that player set a pick, a good pick, where they have to switch, now we have our best attackman versus the worst defensive player on the field. And that's a really good matchup, especially great attackman versus short stick, right? Um, so any of these picks can come into play. Let's just say A1 has the ball and is driving um, behind the goal, right? We have a defender, okay, running with this player. We have, uh, in this situation, we don't really need to work through the heart. All right, because there's paired and we're matched up behind, below, um, or behind and above. This player is just going to come over and set, uh, just set a pick for this defender to essentially run into, and hopefully this player can run around that pick. That's just that basic pick. All right, this defender covering M3 has to read it. Is he going to switch and jump to A1, or will this defender covering A1 be able to get around? Okay. So we've got a couple different options. If there's a switch, all right, and this and this uh, defensive midfielder switches onto A1, well, then now we've got a really good matchup and or we might have enough speed to turn the corner just off this basic pick right here and go to the goal and score, all right? If we end up not beating this player and we have a this good matchup, okay, what, tip, what Virginia does and what smart teams will do is just we've got our pick that's created our big little matchup. We're just going to take this guy and put him and mirror him in front of the goal and let this guy go one-on-one. -on -one. We don't need to pick anymore. We don't want to go back and pick because we've already got our matchup. All right. But let's go back to uh, where the roll and the slips might come into play just off this carry from here. So this player has this defender on him is just carrying behind here. Um, we're setting that pick right there, which is gonna be on the defender's right shoulder as they run through here, okay? If the defender does a good job of getting around the pick and this uh, short stick D midfielder uh, bumps or jumps to the pick, this is where the roll comes in, where this player can roll to this soft spot, all right? And that pass can happen in between there, okay? The same kind of thing can happen with the slip. Now, the slip is just going to be a little bit more mobile, right? This, this uh, midfield three player with the short stick midfielder on him is just running two, but instead of setting that hard shield, is just going to slip through quickly based on what those other defenders have done in, in the first quarter and the second quarter. And then we still got our pass in here, but we didn't even have to set our feet. We just slipped through and then opened up. And now we're catching right-handed because we were looking at the ball. We're catching right-handed. And now we're coming around the goal right-handed. Okay. Um, and, and then we've got, our, we've got our option there. Okay. The last option is the pick and the re-pick, of course, which we'll do the same setup just for simplicity's sake. All right. This guy is driving this defender. This defender sets that pick on the right side of that player. This defender does a great job getting around, all right, the pick. This short stick D midi does not jump because this defenseman is playing good defense on this player. This midfielder just follows that ball carrier and we set the pick on the back side here now. We've got an attackman who's now rolling back to their right hand, right? and hopefully setting that pick on the defender who's not watching because they're following the ball. And 
we might be able to turn the corner and come around here without this defender catching us and or might not even jump and we might be able to set this hard pick and then slide right around the goal. The last thing not having to do with picks but having to do with the game behind is whoever is picking always has to be ready to potentially roll to the goal but also to roll to the end line to back up for a shot that might go out of bounds because it's a very smart thing. We don't want to be giving up opportunities to score because we miss the net and we don't have somebody on the end line. Now, with all of this movement behind here, we've got these two players up here. So we'll talk about a little bit off ball and then we'll talk about above, all right? Which essentially can mimic exactly what's happening back here, but we're just above the goal. So it goes back to that same thing in the one for one set. Who's closest to the ball? Who's farthest away, right? If our, just for um, consistency sake, we've got our player here. We've got our player coming over and setting our pick there. We've got our defensive midfielder here. What does this action look like? Well, typically we've got a defender there and a defender there sagging in. The other defenders are usually playing above these players and in between who they're really covering. Okay. We might have people, we might have defenders sliding down a little bit more, but for the purpose of this, we'll keep them where they are. This player right here is actually closest to the ball. So wherever he starts, whether he's here or down here or down here, if you're closest to the ball, you should be picking for someone farther away from the ball because that creates more space. If we just picked here, right, we only have this space in here to catch and shoot. Whereas, if I set a pick over on this defender, I have this player coming off there because this guy has to slide, so he might be sloughed down a little bit. Now, I've, now if I have a pass coming up here to me, all right, or to A3, I've got, I'm catching this almost in front of the goal, and now I've got a bigger opportunity to run with the ball or shoot or catch and shoot as opposed to just catching it down here from a pick set very close, right? That can be very problematic and difficult. Um, the other, like I said before, the other way is to just have this player kind of in here, right? And have them in like a bit of an eye formation because we don't know what's gonna happen with this player back here. They might make it all the way around the goal. In that setting, we would just have this player come up and set a pick on this side because A1 has made their way all the way around, all right, uh, and potentially could pass coming off here. We've got a roll happening down there, could potentially pass here, and this defender has slid. It's leaving this defender, um, uh, yeah, this defender might be sloughing to the front of the goal, and it's leaving this defender kind of um, high and dry in the situation, so. Actually, we wouldn't even have one of these guys here because that other, those other two defenders are behind. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we would have potential options looking at looking at that. Okay. So that's from that's from behind and involving the off ball pick there. And then we'll do a little look at above, and that'll basically kind of conclude our two, two, two set. All right. So we still got our partnerships here, right? We've got our defenders who, if they're in good position, should be uh, on the goal line because the ball is not down there, right? We have got, we'll just pretend that's that, that guy there. We have our defender here, right? We have another player here and a defender there, all right? We've got our uh, other defender here and our other defender here covering these two players, okay? Um, so this guy's the ball carrier. Lost it. Knew that was going to happen once today. This guy's the ball carrier. We can do the exact same things that we were just doing behind, right? Our A, this is where it's important to essentially get to the heart or behind your defender, right? If we have the heart here, right, rudimentary, that's a far way for this player to really cut down and get into and then come and set a pick. So the heart or behind a defender means we are cutting 
behind this defender's head instead of in front of this defender's head to pick on this player, which we're trying to essentially be behind, right, as well. But what this does is cutting behind this defender's head, it makes this defender have to turn and take their eyes off the ball a little bit or turn this way, all right? Instead of just running in front where we can, they can just watch you run to a pick, um, that's what we mean about getting behind. So let's say this player cuts behind there and sets this pick, all right? This is just our basic sweep kind of uh, dodge off of a basic pick, all right? If that works off the basic pick and this defender who is following A2 can't keep up, well, then we've got all this space to go to the goal, potentially shoot if no one slides down here, all right? Uh, we could have our pick and roll happen, all right? This player goes off, this attackman uh, or partner jumps down here because this defender went over with him, this defender jumped. We've got one, two defenders against one offensive players. We have our little pass through here. And then finally, we could have our, our slip, which is gonna look the same, all right? But we didn't set our feet and we just slip down and we go. Uh, and then again, the last one, the repick, right? redraw this would be this defender all right is following this player gets around the top of the pick let's just say it's set here okay and that defender is watching him this player now uh stops and turns back right this def uh, this attack of attack player comes over and sets that pick there and now we're creating that alley down that way and hoping this player does not switch or can't keep up with that player. So there's your one, two, three, four, your basic, your uh, roll, your slip, and your redodge or your repick up in the top, right? Obviously, while that's happening, things are a little, little different inside than they were uh, behind before. But just for simplicity's sake, we'll say that we have a basic pick set, all right? And we have this guy sweeping around, right? So the farthest player from the ball is going to be uh, uh, M2, all right? Because if this player continues, that pass is longer than this straight down pass. So this attackman should be coming over and setting a pick on this defenseman who is covering this player here, okay? They were setting that there, enabling this player to come around top side. This defenseman is going to have to slide, all right? Because if we beat both guys here, they have to slide. And even if they don't have to slide, he has to be ready to slide, all right? And because that pick is set there, this player can come up and around and be ready for this player to throw that pass that way if they're dodging right-handed, if there's a slide or not, okay? All the while, these players really have to read the situation and do what I call do -si do all right? stay in these positions, either at X or the wing, X or the wing, X or the wing, depending on which side the ball goes to, all right? Because we need to have our relief pass, we need to have our backup, and that's how we kind of just continue our offense. If none of that works and we have really good defense, we can hit it up to the back uh, or to below the goal and then start attacking from there, so. So it looks like this, the philosophy, no matter what set you're using it in, um, it looks like the, the idea behind all of this is really to, to try and create those odd man situations that happen very, very quickly and then have the, the IQ to be able to read and react to exploit uh, the defense of trying to slide into new positions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as teams get better at doing this, they get better at reacting. They get better at seeing two moves ahead, two passes ahead, a slide ahead. Um, and then that's where those like third and fourth level picking options really come into play. And as we talked about earlier, that's where those options come from. Well, we drew two guys. We had a guy come around an off ball pick. We, we passed it to him. This, someone slid to him, but now we have another option because that player rolled and now we've got a dodge, two passes, and it's in the goal, you know? So that's the, that's the best way that teams can, can play offense, all right? It's great to have players that can dodge and just uh, 
just create something out of nothing. Uh, but that's like 5%, if not less of our dodges we're going to score on initially, right? It has to come from off ball movement, on ball and off ball picking, and then reducing, all right? Reducing and finding the next guy who's open, who can put it in the net, who has a better shot than you do. Yeah, I think, um, and I think when, when the players first start out working on the two-man game, they almost concentrate so much on their two men and the group that they're with that they almost think that that becomes the entire offense and that that is what is creating the goal when, when in fact it's what's creating that reduction that you talk about, the odd man situation, and then it's just finding the open man. Um, so I think it's important to note that we have to see the bigger picture. We've got to know where, where everyone else is moving around the field. Yeah. And a lot of times too, like, like we said, those young players are new players or inexperienced players will think that everything is going to live and die with their little partner matchup in that time. And that they have to make something happen in this little situation. We were just making the examples of this guy dodging here from behind the goal in that 2-2-2 two, two, two set. You know, well, if they play really good defense on you and they switch and you don't have a good matchup, all right, um, and maybe your players aren't, aren't in position, um, it doesn't, you don't have to go to the goal, you know, unless we're in college and we're shot clock uh, is, is coming up against us, right? We can pull the ball out, pass it back, take, catch our breath and set again. We could pass it to our other players around the top. They could try that two man game up, up above. Um, and depending on the set we're in, it doesn't have to live and die with each time you get the ball. Um, we talked to my players a lot about this. About 70 to 80% of the time you touch the ball on offense, you should essentially be kind of transferring the ball. It's about 20 to 30% of the time where it's your turn to dodge or shoot hmm. or feet based on a dodge. Yeah, that's probably, yeah, that's very good. I, I like that. And those numbers with good teams that pass the ball a lot could actually shrink where you're only 10% of the time, 15% of the time, you're actually supposed to create something and make something happen. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Trevor, thank you uh, for all of the information. Uh, I think I learned a lot about what, what we can do, the different options that we can use the two man game and field. It looks like you can almost use it in any set. Um, if you're, if you're really creative and your players, uh, your players have the IQ to be able to read and react. So I really want to thank you, uh, for this and, um, let's, let's talk again real soon. I think we're going to also do something about box. So everybody should, should look for that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And uh, remember the simple things and, you know, that opens up the options for those, those bigger options for scoring. So. Excellent. Thanks Trevor. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye.